What is going on, guys? We are back. Never give up. Another video. Another F-150. Another windy day. So, I promise I'm going to be trying to get a, uh, a microphone, so better audio, audio quality. But we have another truck to look at. And we're going to try and do this now more individual basis, because I, I think that's a little bit more helpful for all you guys. Uh, this is going to be a 2021 F-150 STX 4x4. And a little special thing about this guy is it has the 3.5 liter EcoBoost. It's a twin turbo V6. So this block is right out of the uh, the Raptor and also really the same block out of the high performance Ford GT. If you've heard of that, you know, half a million dollar sports car. So, uh, totally kick ass motor. You have, I want to say, 370, I think, 370 horsepower, uh, 470 or 475 torque, you know, right around there. And you also have some really great towing numbers. So, towing wise, you're looking at about 13,000 pounds properly equipped this guy is equipped with 4x4 you see the hooks in the front and this is the STX package so these STX's are kind of like a um, uh, sportier looking more much more well equipped uh, work truck you know so they'll have a lot of nice stuff power windows power power locks power doors you'll even have the the big the big touch screen uh, sync 4 that works with the wireless Apple CarPlay a really nice uh, amount of like standard stuff uh, backup camera and uh, sensors and of course just the whole new body for F-150 so we're gonna kind of walk around this and give you my best rundown of everything that you everything that these guys have to offer now, like I mentioned with the last couple videos, I've been very impressed with these trucks. And also, like I mentioned in the last video, still don't have image, uh, image stabilization. You know, I'm going to have to save a few, few pennies <laughs> before we get there. I'm trying to take it slow, though. So now we're in the bed here. So these newer F-150s, and they did start last year, they, they have the stamp on the bed that I, I think looks good. And another nice thing with these, uh, these F-150s that kind of separate them from a lot of the competition is the build quality. So, our build materials, I should say. And I, and I like to think the build quality, too. These trucks happen to be really built, really well built. Um, but material wise this is uh, aluminum so all these panels on the outside are all aluminum from the bed all, all the way up front it's all aluminum so it'll never rust which is I, I think a huge selling point you know your paint corrodes I mean a lot of these people keep their vehicles for a long time and if you are one of those people you're gonna be I mean your money is going in the in, in the better direction and my whole bias or you know all bias is in uh, right here, I kind of want to show you the cam uh, the key. Well, thank you, Autofocus. I actually worked this time. I have kind of like a little pop-out fob. Uh, something to mention, because there is no... And it's a little windy. Bear with me, guys. I, mean, I know that's not going to come out good. Uh, something to mention... Because you just have the fob... Oh, please stop wind. So you don't have like the slow release there with the tailgate on these STXs. But uh, something to mention with the, because you just have the fob is, this does work with a free app called Ford Pass. You can turn the truck on and off from your phone, lock it, unlock it. All the, uh, the fun stuff you normally get on one of those higher end vehicles. I'm trying to focus on here. You actually have some C-clamp inserts in the tailgate itself. It's getting really out of control with the wind. You 
also have a spray and bed liner, which happens to be really nice. These STXs are totally, they're just the functional truck, you know? Now, inside the bed, on these higher trims, you kind of see it's covered up with black plastic. Some of them will have, well, not any of these STXs, but the power on board. Um, so up to, I think it's 7.2 kilowatts. You can basically have like a generator in here. Very, very cool stuff. Now these STXs, we'll also look at the, uh, the wheels here. You see you have uh, 20 inch wheels that do look nice. You have some hand cooked tires. Dyna, Dyna Pro AT2s, all terrains. This STX happens to have running boards installed, which are nice, from the factory. I mean, there's an option for everything nowadays, you know, which is you know, good and bad. I'm going to do my best here to get some better lighting. I might have to make a cut here because the lighting is just not looking like what I need, but I'll be right back, guys. Alright, so we bumped the uh, the ISO a bunch and hopefully uh, we can get some better shots of the interior on the SDX. One of the key points you'll see on the side is, uh, or on the inside, you have the vinyl flooring. No carpeted flooring, which is, I really don't think it's a big deal. We also have manual seats. So that, this, this might be the deal breaker for some folk. Um, it actually, it doesn't crank up and down. So I think that if we're getting nitpicky, this is probably one of the things Ford, you know, chose to do to make you bump up in trim levels for better or for worse. Uh, the other thing, if I'm just peeking on the side, you see you have the, the dark door handles, the plastic, the plastic door handles. Inside wise, really impressive just with obviously quality, fit and finish. Um, with all the stuff here really really nice really nice Let me look at the seats you can see the center console and I ignore my whole filter if I had this filter on it would just be too too dang dark you know it's like the payments on these guys too dang high <laughs> no. <laughs> right you know it's just uh, they're expensive trucks you know but um interior this whole center console wow you know really i mean we're talking about home runs by ford they really freaking knocked it out of the park here everything is just super useful kind of said in another video ergonomic easy to reach you know nothing nothing doesn't serve a purpose and i love that i hate having useless buttons and all that stuff so everything you see here is definitely what people are using you see up in the top you have your your volume controls up here your skip and stuff you can actually turn off your display from here AC controls on the side let me mention it was a 4x4 you have your 4x4 toggles there as well as this drive mode selector this is very satisfying and fun to use. You can change your drive modes right on the fly. Something I didn't mention in my previous video, I kind of, I don't know why I thought, <laughs> I thought everyone would know anyway, but um, the column, uh, the column shifter on the side, there's no reason anyone would know that <laughs> automatically, but the column shifter on the side, if you can see that, that's what these STX are going to have. The center console, if you like the center console shifter with the up and down stuff, you know, Ford's making you bump up to XLT again. If you look on the right, little 12 volt USB and USB C. And then this button right up there opens your little cubby, a little hideaway. We're looking at trim, I just think. All the trim, I mean, even though there is, you know, there's some plastic. There's a lot of plastic, no no doubt about it. But don't like, you know, don't let these other manufacturers fool you. They got plastic throughout too, you know. We gotta stop hating on the plastic with these interiors. 
they really are getting the job done. I mean, that American flag looks great. I mean, I'm all for the environment and all that fun stuff, but it's some of this stuff. I mean, they did a great job with it. You know, plastic don't feel like plastic somehow. I don't know. Your back seat, definitely nice. And the STX as well. Really similar to uh, the XLTs. You know, tons of room with the Super Crew. You fold it up. And look at this, guys. I mean, you have... You're comfy. Put a bed, bed back here, you know. Do whatever. Now, what I'm trying to focus on is you have another power outlet with the USB and USB-C in the back, as well as a 12-volt with more fans in the back. So, I... I just really like these trucks. I think they're a great value. And I'm saying value because I know this truck is, uh, you know, about 50000 And that's a 4x4 four four and stuff. But when you're looking at a truck that's supposed to last a while and stuff, and if you don't necessarily care about a lot of these other features, it's not a bad option. Now, I'm going to turn this guy on. I'm going to get the exposure and stuff semi better. And I'm going to turn this guy on and uh, I'll show you some of the displays and stuff. If you do have the key, I'm going to get the key. And it'll go right in there. Foot on the brake. Actually, I don't even know if you need to do that foot on the brake in all honesty anymore. So your gauge is up here. And your steering wheel over here. And the steering wheel, I also think they, you know, did a good job. Left hand side, you have cruise control settings, volume controls, and then the button on the far right with the little car and the lines, that's your lane keeping. So you do have lane keeping on all these trucks, standard. Uh, so if you drift in and out of the lane, the steering wheel is going to vibrate, give you some feedback, put you in the right direction. On the right hand side, you have some just different uh, controls for your center stack up here. So you have a menu button that you can press. And you press that. Oh, if I go through my driver <laughs> door open and all these messages, you'll see this is kind of what the screen will look like when you're driving. You have a digital speedo. And you can kind of scroll in between different vehicle info. That I think is, is really nice. You can see that's what the lane keeping looks like. So when you're going, you know, 40 plus, you know, you'll see green lines for doing good and red lines. You'll feel a vibration in the steering wheel. I think this stuff is, is incredibly useful and important. Now, what else is in the interior, John? Well, this center display that's way too overexposed. So <laughs> give me a minute. I'm going to record that. Alrighty, so we're back. I'm gonna kind of go through all these buttons up top. Hard to see, and I apologize. I, as I said, I was gonna edit this stuff. For, uh, auto start stop up here. You see the little orange off button. So you can actually turn this feature on and off. Cuts off the engine when you're at a red light. It's just there to save your fuel economy. They're putting in everything now. I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of on the fence about this stuff to be quite honest. I really, I, I personally wish it wasn't in there, but. You know, you can't get away from it. Um, there's a camera button up here that you can pull up a live feed of your camera. Can't do this when you're really driving. You have to be at low speeds or in reverse. From this camera, you can actually see the tailgates down. From this, you can also um, turn off your, your parking sensors. Right next to that camera button, you also have your hazards and your traction control. So, a few important buttons right at the top. So the screen, what's going on with the screen? I'm going to try and do a little bit better job explaining it. Um, but this is Sync 4. Uh, it's basically Ford's new infotainment system. It works, it works with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And actually, if you have one of the newer iPhones, I think it's iPhone 5 or newer, um, it actually does wireless Apple CarPlay now. So 
very powerful right there so you basically can have even though I mean this one has navigation and this is about to sound really confusing but it has a navigation tile that's only there uh, complimentary for three months and then after that it would actually disappear so the good thing is uh, if you have an iPhone or an Android and you have internet you could just use Apple CarPlay Android Auto and you have Google Maps at any time uh, kind of funky thing that Ford's doing though is kind of what I mentioned navigation with these um, additional features they have uh, like active traffic and stuff like that um, those will eventually be a subscription service which I mean I you know I'm kind of another one of the things I'm not too crazy for but the way you explain it is it you know normally every three years you upgrade your navigation anyway at the end of three years, if you're paying for this service, it'll be the same as if you, you know, pay, paid that one-time installment for upgrading. So that's a, a good way to look at it because um, it's only going to be about 150 bucks for like three years, you know. Um, but it's not even required anyway. So if you buy as the option, they call it connective navigation now, you'll get this three-month trial or whatever. But after it's done, you'll still have your your turn by turn directions and stuff. It's just you you miss that added layer of the active you know the the live feed of the traffic alerts and stuff like that. So not hugely necessary, but I kind of wanted to clear the air on that stuff because I think a lot of people have been saying, oh Ford is has a a, a subscription with uh, navigation now and it's required and it's it's not it sounds like that, but it's really it's really not so. If you were paying for navigation as an option before, it's the same. Um, and how, how, how does the screen work? Uh, I, I like to think it's one of the best, if not the best, infotainment system around. As you can kind of see, well that's just that was a little chug right there, but as if you can actually click on the things, there's a little screen protector in front of here. But as long as my, my hands detect it and I press the button, it's very responsive. So I click add Search phone, I go in between these things. It's very, you know, it's not fighting me. You know, it's the thing I love to say with my customers. I think it's very useful. Additionally, now you have features. That's a new tab that they added with these trucks. So I can see some towing stuff and owner's manual, driver's assistant stuff. So you can turn on some of the, um, some of the safety stuff if you don't really care about it. And you could actually go through what is on the truck which I which is also I mean a lot of people are like what's on my truck well I mean you can see a lot of the stuff right here lane keeping pre-collision assist you have a rear view camera parking sensors um, and I mean this is the STX this is kind of like the standard plain Jane uh, trim level so very useful and then the system itself is also very functional um, you're not fighting this thing at all the navigation happens to be great um, you know, you can just press the little three th right up here, get all sorts of stuff. Yeah, very, very easy to use. Um, and then I'll also show you, just going on a tangent, uh, the drive mode selector over here. So you do have a little drive modes here, so you can go in between your two high, your four high, and your four low. Those are your four by four controls. But you see the drive modes as you turn it, satisfying clear uh, click. But also change your gauges up here. So if I go in between here, I go from tow haul, I go to economy, I go to sport. Um, this will change the throttle response, the shifting, a lot of stuff. The dynamic driving dynamics for the truck, and I've I found that to be like really. I mean, you could feel it. Um, it's a really it's a really functional thing. You know, I recommend you. You know, you're trying to get farther, put on economy. You're towing something, put on tow haul. And they'll automatically add some, you know, some settings. Some of them will automatically apply 4x4. Four four. Um, useful stuff. Um, but from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the engine. Talk a little bit about that guy. I kind of touched on it before. And uh, I'll set you guys free. All right, bear with me one sec, guys. We're just going to pull this little tab right here. Rock right around in the hood. Bad boy off. You can see you 
you definitely got a, uh, a big engine in there. Forgive the wind and mother nature, I've yet to be able to control that. Also, maybe you could have chosen a better time to record, but I figure there's going to be loads of times to do that. I just want to get as much of this stuff out here as possible. Yeah, it's been a little bit slow here, guys. Feel like you're hauling ass, or you can't haul ass, which is why uh, I found this to uh, be a really, really interesting truck, STX 4x4. So, um, we haven't really had a whole lot of trucks on the lot lately. I mean, we usually have hundreds, and I have four F 150s, guys, or five, including this STX. Like it's it's getting pretty miserable out here. I'm not even trying to sell cars at this point. I'm I'm just trying to you know figure out another way to make stuff work here. But uh, you know the Super Duties over there. I think I'll make some videos on those guys. And um, if there's anything that y'all want to see, let me know. You know I have access to a lot of this stuff. You know if there's something I should do, I am trying to you know I'm definitely going to be trying to work on the image uh, stabilization. The lighting and the uh, the sound, which is like the whole dang thing. Um, but yeah, just appreciate any of y'all that have watched any of this stuff. Um, if you want to watch more, if you're looking for a certain thing, let me know. You know, I don't bite, and I kind of want to make this work. So, uh, thanks for watching, and until next time, stay awesome, guys.